Hi, this is Doug Henson of Information Week, and I'm here in the office of SAS in New York City to talk to CEO Dr. James Goodnight about some of the latest trends in analytics, new competition, including open source vendors, and the impact of big data. Dr. Goodnight, SAS has been in business for 36 years. Why so much interest in analytics within the last five years alone? Well, I think the interest uh, in analytics in the last five years really stems from uh, 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 some articles were in Harvard Business Review and then a, a, a number of books that came out. Uh, so there's been a raft of uh, books being published about the use of analytics in business. And I think that sort of woke, woke a lot of the people up in business that they really ought to be doing more with their data. So the boom in analytics has sort of coincided with growing interest in big data. What's the correlation between these two trends? Well, big data, uh, we're talking a lot about big data now. That's because everybody got tired of talking about the cloud. So, you know, every two years you have to move on to some new topic, and, and this uh, topic for this year and next is big data. Uh, the fact is we've been, we've been working with big data for, for many, many years. Uh, SAS is designed to handle big data. Uh, unlike the transactional systems, some of the SQL-based transaction systems, they are designed to uh, be a transaction system, fast, you know, little pieces in, little pieces out real fast. Uh, whereas an analytical system needs to have data but that, that, that you read in in big blocks. And, and you don't have to worry about all the indexing and high speed and uh, 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 results because you're normally processing all the data. So um, that's always been the, the way our file system has been set up to handle very large data. With growing interest in analytics, a lot more vendors are now competing in the analytic market. But what would you say is the, the difference that separates real analytics from, say, reporting and dashboarding? Yeah, dashboarding uh, using uh, what we call business intelligence tools. Now, business intelligence tools are really not that intelligent. Uh, they're simply doing a, a query and reporting. They're querying the database, getting results back, and displaying it. Typically, you're looking backwards. You're looking in the rearview mirror to see where you've been. Uh, how, how many of this did you sell yesterday? What, what you know, were, are red dresses selling this year? Uh, how many cars were sold last, last month? That's the kind of thing that business intelligence does. Analytics uses all the pa past data in the past to build models to forecast the future. So that's the big difference in, in what, what we call analytics and what the BI vendors call analytics. Their stuff is looking backwards, frequency, you know, bar charts, things like that. We're doing things like logistic regression to compute the probability that somebody's going to default on a loan. Or we're using um, neural networks to decide whether or not a, a purchase, a, a credit card purchase is being made uh, as, as a, is fraudulent or, or not. Um, we're, doing, we're helping banks compute the value at risk with all their investments. This is done through simulations of uh, looking at the past, simulating what could happen in the future, pricing everything that you've got at, at those future states, and, and, and computing value at risk. So analytics is a lot, lot deeper than, uh, uh, than you're seeing uh, with, from some of the BI vendors. You're getting very intense uh, competition from tech giants like IBM, Oracle and SAP. Uh, as a customer, why wouldn't I want to buy from the same vendor that offers me my applications or my database? Well, because they're database vendors. Why would you buy a solution from them? I mean, if you want, to, if you want a real analytic vendor, you come to SAS. Uh, we support all those databases. We read every one of them. So it's not that the fact that you've got your data in Oracle or DB2 doesn't matter. We can read it just, just as good as anybody else. But they say they now offer the analytic software as well. Well, they do. They offer a, a limited set of, of, uh, of, of functionality. You just will not find the depth of functionality that you're getting with SAS. Plus now, um, you know, we have really moved into massively parallel computing uh, using uh, low-cost low cost, uh, grid computers. And with that, uh, we, can, we can process uh, massive jobs a thousand times faster than before. So we are, we are sort of the cutting edge of this high performance analytics. So Dr. Goodnight, SAS has a long history of working with database vendors. You're still a big partner with companies like EMC and Teradata. 
But with the emergence of some of these platforms like Hadoop and NoSQL databases, are customers now less dependent upon relational databases? Well, for the kind of data that they're collecting, to try to try to put um, you know, this massive amount of, of uh, web data, uh, you know, log data in, into a, a, a transactional database just doesn't make a lot of sense. Transactional databases typically take five or six times more space on the disk to store data than if you have it compressed and you know stored in something like Hadoop or in, in a SAS in SAS files. Uh, so it's just too many companies have said, well, our database standard is X, and everything we do we have to put into X. And it's been a big mistake, unless it's, unless it's transactional data, you really don't need it in a transactional system. There's a really growing interest in open source analytics based on the R programming language, particularly in the big data community where they're already using open source tools. Uh, is SAS supporting the R language? And how can you compete with some of this open source software? Uh, we've supported R for, for several years now. Uh, we, we, you can embed any R program that you want to in, in, into a SAS run so that you can use uh, the power of our uh, and our ability to bring data in. And if, you, if, you, if you've learned R in college, you can still use it. So we, we have no problem with it. What, what do you ascribe the growing interest? Is, is R really the language used in the big data community? It, it was cheap. It was free. You know, and that's that's the main that's the main thing, especially at universities. The, the professor could just say, "Go download this program; and it's free, and you got it." Whereas with the SAS, we we've had a sort of a, a licensing system that uh, we have more and more universities are signing up for SAS because it, it's a true workhorse. Uh, it's very very deep. You know, I, I think of R as sort of wide, but not very deep. So, what will be the uh, SAS's play in the big data trend? Well, our, our big play is our in-memory in uh, analytics that we're doing right now. Uh, uh, you, you know, if you want to store your data in Hadoop, and, and we recommend that for, for a lot of the stuff that we do in the Hadoop file system, we have our own file format that we use uh, within that system. But the, uh, the beauty of it is that if we have a thousand processes running to solve a problem, we can parallel load the data into memory. And that's that is an extremely that, that's the next release of Hadoop. But we're already we're already on that ourselves. But but that next release has that ability to do these parallel loads, uh, which means you can read a billion records in about two seconds. Okay, what's an example of a difference that would make to a, a business, a manufacturer, a bank, a retailer? Well, banks um, uh, obviously have huge amounts of data, all their customer data. Uh, they they want to know which. Uh, which customers are, are um, the most profitable? You know, what, what set of customers are we actually losing money on? Uh, is there any way we can steer these customers into uh, an alternative, maybe an online banking uh, situation? Uh, which customers do you want to include in your next marketing campaign? So you've got, uh, uh, you know, $12, $12 million marketing budget. You want to target the right customers with the right offers. You want to make sure they don't get too many offers. You don't want to hit them with, from the same channel again. And so there's a lot of optimization that you can, can do with marketing campaigns. Thank you, Dr. Goodnight. This is Doug Henson of Information Week here in the offices of SAS in New York City, talking about analytics, big data, and some of the biggest trends in technology today.